Hey everyone, it's Ashpreet, and today let's build out the LLM OS and answer the question, is it fair to think of LLMs as the CPU of an emerging operating system? Now, this concept was first proposed by the magnificent Andre Karpathy in his Intro to Large Language Model talk, where he proposes that we should think of LLMs as the kernel process of an emerging operating system. And this kernel process, which is the LLM, can coordinate many different resources to solve problems. So we have a conversation with this LLM OS and it can coordinate resources like memory, computational tools, search the internet to solve that problem. So here is the wireframe which Karpathy proposes and we're gonna take this wireframe as an inspiration and add some colors to and fill in the gaps and showcase what we're gonna build today. We're going to use GPT-4 Turbo as the LLM. And what we want is we want GPT-4 to be able to use the traditional software tools like calculator and the terminal to answer some questions about maths or what's happening with the file system. Then we want the LLM to be able to access the internet and answer questions. We want it to be able to search the internet and uh, take an input from us and give us a summary of a question we've asked. Then we want it to be able to access the disk or its file system. We also want it to have a memory, which we're going to provide using a Postgres database. And we want it to have knowledge, which we're gonna provide using a vector database. Now, one of the key components of this LLM OS is that it has more knowledge than any single human about all subjects. This we're gonna provide using the file system, which is a combination of the database and the vector DB. Then we're also going to tick many of these boxes, but we're gonna also leave out a few things like it doesn't have audio video yet. It can't think for a long time. It can't self improve yet. So we're gonna start with this early implementation. Now this is a work in progress and see if it's possible for the LLM to be the CPU of a emerging operating system. Let's get started. So this is what our LLM OS application is going to look like. We're gonna give it a set of tools and we're also gonna give it a set of other LLMs it can call. Um, so let's start with some basic tools like calculator, file tools, and web search. Let's ask what is 10 factorial. It should be able to use the calculator in tool and answer that question, which it did. Great. Now um, I wanna ask if it can access the file system what's in the readme file so this is the llmos directory so it should be able to read the file of the llmos application so it's uh it can read that file and give me the concept uh context of this and well there's a great introduction as well because it can it highlights how to run this llmos and what we're going to be implementing today. We can see that it can generate text, it has more knowledge, it can browse the internet, it can use existing software infrastructure, but it right now we're gonna leave the implementation of videos and audio, we're gonna leave the self-improvement part and we can, but we will add that it can communicate with other LLMs, which we're gonna show later, and all the process for running this. And then finally, let's do some web, web search, let's ask uh, what's, happening in France. So now it should be able to do some web search and answer that question with the web results. So it's gonna use Dr. Co free API and then answer the question about news in France. Great. Uh, now the next part for us is the terminal. Now this is a bit risky. I'd never put this in production, but let's give it some shell tools and ask what processes are running. And it should be able to use the ps command to give us an overview now i'm more interested in asking if it uh, if any docker containers are running let's see what happens with that which docker containers are running so the llmos can access the underlying operating system as well great now we get to the fun bit now we want to see first if it has knowledge and if it can communicate with other LLMs to answer questions. So first, 
let's give it this blog post. Let's add it to the knowledge. And um, yeah, let's refresh. Let's add this blog post to the knowledge and then ask questions. Uh, what we want is we want to continuously add more information to the knowledge and then get answers from that. Um, so let's ask, tell me about the Lama 3 models. Now, in this case, it should be able to search its knowledge base and give us an answer, which it did. The next step for us is to see if this knowledge and the internet can work together. Now, you can, we can easily build a, an assistant to use one specific tool, but what we really want to see is that how wide can we stretch this functionality? Um, now, let's say, tell me the latest from Meta AI. Now, in this case, it shouldn't search its knowledge, but search the internet to get the answer, which it did. Fantastic. Now, the next piece which I want to do is I want to continue this conversation and ask if I should invest in Meta. So what we did is we gave it a team member, an investment assistant, and then we ask, shall I invest in Meta? And now our LLMOS should be, which is beautiful, should be able to delegate a task to the investment assistant, which will go through a series of processes. It will search the internet for news about that company. It'll get the stock price, get company information, get analyst recommendations, do a thorough investment research. Again, this isn't financial advice. We're just playing around. And then give us an answer. And our LLMOS will present that information to us to answer our question. So I ask, shall I invest in Meta? Now, behind the scenes, um, the investment assistant is right now running step by step. It's going through the process of um, getting the news on that company, generating a full report, which gives us an answer. So right now, it gave me some core metrics, told me some financial performance, growth prospect, gave me some news, and the recommendation is about, again, this isn't financial advice. This is just a AI engineer trying to build the LLMOS. But this is how our LLMOS is communicating with other LLMs. Now look at this. So why did it take so long? We can answer that question here as well. So the investment assistant memory, let's check that out. So over here, we're seeing that our main LLM communicated with the other LLM saying, provide an investment report on Meta. And behind the scenes, that assistant went through step-by-step -step executing the tool called get current stock price. That's the result. Then get analyst recommendations. So over here are, yes. Then it'll get the news about the assistant, produce a report that is then returned to the main LLMOS, and then it answers this question. Now, let's go step-by-step step and build this out. The code for the LLMOS you can find in the FireData repository to clone the LLMOS and make it your own fork and clone the FireData repo and then go under the cookbook LLMOS directory. Over here, we have step-by-step -step instructions on how you can run the LLMOS yourself. Now, once you've cloned that repo, let me just turn this off. Clone the repo in and open it up in the code editor of your choice. Again, under cookbook LLMOS readme, which has step-by-step -step instructions. Then open up your favorite terminal. Create your virtual environment. Install the dependencies like Streamlit, OpenAI, FireData to, um, to run the LLMOS, then export your credentials. We are using EXA for web search. So get an EXA API key. We're using PG Vector to provide a memory and knowledge to our LLMOS. So run PG Vector. This will throw an error for me because it's already running, but for you, it'll run, a, uh, run the Postgres database in a Docker container and then run the LLMOS application. Fantastic. And now we're gonna go through this step-by-step. -step. Uh, so let's do something which we didn't do before. Now we're gonna, behind the scenes, 
the LLM OS has the app, which is the front end. Let me turn this down, uh, which is the front end for our application. I'm not going to walk through this, but the magic happens in the LLM OS assistant. So over here is where we are building our LLM OS. So there's a, we add the tools and the team. I'm going to walk through them later. But first, I'm going to show you the LLM OS, how we're building that. So we're building it using FiData, which helps us build assistance with memory, knowledge, and tools. So first, we're going to give our LLM a description and instructions. So if you've been following FiData, uh, you know, description and instructions are just a way to format the system prompt. You can set your own system prompt yourself using the system prompt parameter, uh, but instructions just print it out one, two, three, four. So that's why we just use it. You can use your own system prompt if you'd like. So we're giving our LLM OS the description is the most advanced AI system in the world called LLM OS. You have access to a set of tools and a team of AI assistants at your disposal. Then we say, when the user sends a message, first think and determine if you can answer using a tool available to you. You need to search the knowledge, you need to search the internet, delegate tasks to a team member, or you need to ask a clarifying question. So this is where in the first step, we ask our LLM OS, whether you need to run a tool to answer the question, you need to search your knowledge or your memory, you need to access the internet or delegate tasks to another assistant available. And then we give it a set of extra instructions, which I'll walk through for using the other LLMs. Now, here is where we add the storage and knowledge, the file system and the disk piece. We give it storage backed by a database. We give it knowledge backed by PG Vector. Again, both are running with Postgres, makes it very, very easy. And then we give it a set of tools, which using function calling, it can run those tools. We give it a team of other AI assistants where our LLM OS has a, a dedicated data analyst, a dedicated uh, Python, uh, assistant, a dedicated research assistant. And then a few other, we're giving it a few other settings like uh, give it a tool to access its chat history, uh, results, give the result in markdown format and add the current date time to the instruction. So it has a little more idea of like, you know, that the current time it's running. And now let's talk through the tools and the team it has access to. Scroll up and the tools we're giving, we're very simply saying if the calculator is enabled, add the calculator tool. If DuckDuckGo search is enabled, add DuckDuckGo. Um, if shell access is enabled, add the shell tools, but also add instructions. You can use the run shell command, uh, run shell command tool to run shell commands. So this is where we tell the LLM, hey, you have access to this tool. If you need something to run shell terminal commands, use this tool. Same with file tools. The next part of where it gets very interesting is how we give it a team of AI assistant or LLM OS can pull to achieve tasks. First is our data analyst. Now this is where, it's, uh, so to our data analyst, I'm keeping things very simple where I'm giving the data analyst a set of my favorite movies. It's just an IMDb list, it's not my favorite movies. It's and but I'm telling it that these are my favorite movies. Use the data analyst if I want insight. So over here, you can give it a bunch of CSVs, give it your own data, and have the LLM OS communicate with the data analyst to analyze uh, any sort of like files you have on the system. And then we give it extra instructions to answer questions about my favorite movies, delegate the task to the data analyst. So here we are teaching the main LLM OS that hey, if I ask a question about my favorite movies, send it to the data analyst. Similarly, we're adding a Python assistant that can write and run Python code. Again, this is very risky, uh, but we're just experimenting here. It has access to pip install. It can use the streamlit charting libraries. And we're saying to write and run Python code, delegate the task to the Python assistant. Now, this is where it gets even more fun. We are giving it a research assistant where we're saying, if I ask for a thorough report on a topic, use the research assistant. And we're giving a format in which the research assistant should return the results. Similarly, we're asking about an investment assistant. We're giving it an investment assistant as well. This gives the our LLM OS a full team. Now let's see how the research assistant works. So I'm gonna just 
take everything. Just show you if it can. We are basically trying to see how far we can extend. GPT-4 is, let's say, pretty decent. Uh, I think OpenAI is coming up with a better model. So I'm looking forward to testing the LLM OS out with that. So let's ask, um, write a report on the IBM HashiCorp acquisition. Not sure if I spelled things right, but the advantage of the LLM OS is that it should be able to delegate, like clear up my typos and send it to the right assistant in the right format. So to see the logs behind the scenes, open the terminal where you were running, and there you can see the exact logs that are happening. Um, so you can see that the answer, which the task which went to the uh, research assistant, so here's the uh, LLM OS, delegating the task to the research assistant saying, write a detailed report on the IBM acquisition of HashiCorp covering key details such as acquisition date, financial terms, strategic reasons. That is pretty good. I didn't ask, I just said, give me a rep report. And the LLM OS was able to get the research assistant to do all the work for it. And it's starting to write that report in a very, very good format for us. So here we are seeing, now let's get back to our main diagram. Here we are seeing that we can have GPT-4 act as the CPU of an operating system that can coordinate different resources to solve problems using natural language. We've seen it can easily access tools. We can see it can access the internet. We can also see it has access to the file system using its vector database. Whenever we ask questions which it think it might do, it might need to access its knowledge base, it's doing that. And it can and it can delegate tasks to other LLMs as well, which is this fascinating how fast we're moving with this. So here's the report it generated. And then it's also showing me um, what's happening behind the scenes with the research assistant. I'm not gonna go into too much details. Uh, you should play around with this, but obviously with very low expectations. Uh, now let's see what happens with the Python assistant. Now let's refresh this and say, um, what's a good task which can we give it? Write Python code to get top hack news stories. Show me only the user and score. Now, instead of doing DuckDuckGo search, it should delegate it to the Python assistant, which should behind the scenes write code for us. So while that's going on, I want to circle back and end our really long video now that with the evaluating whether the LLM can be the CPU of an emerging operating system. I think it possibly can. With how fast we're moving, by 2027, we can have LLMs right now, 128,000 uh, tokens is the context window for GPT-4. We're already seeing million, 10 million uh, token context windows. What if we get, you know, as RAM also increases, I think if you get capability, which is double what of GPT-4 is with 10 million context window, I think you could build very, very useful applications using this paradigm. Now, I want to give all credit to Andrew Karpati for proposing this. This is his work, and he is truly an inspiration to all of us in the field. But and this, the future is very, very bright. Okay, now let's see if our Python assistant does his job before we say goodbye. Um, it did a very fantastic job, and that's the memory. Let's see behind the scenes if it generates the file. Okay, let's pull you down. Under the Scratch repo, it wrote Python code for me to give me the answer. Well, that's it, folks. That's the LLM OS. This video went longer than I was expecting, but hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, drop by in the Discord. Test it out, uh, break it. This is a V0 implementation, so I'm not expecting this to be of any use, but, uh, but let's play around and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Have a good day. Bye.